Welcome to Delta Green, Impossible Landscapes, brought to you by Black Project Gaming. Get read in at blackprojectgaming.com. I'm Vince, your host and handler for this campaign. Joining me are Brett, as DEA Special Agent Michael Whitwer, also known as Agent Vega. Cammy as FBI Special Agent Geneva Brown, also known as Agent Venus. Doug, as FBI Special Agent Mark Hansom, also known as Agent Meshock. And Jack, as FBI Special Agent Cassandra Troy, also known as Agent Madison. Impossible Landscapes is a campaign of wonder, horror, and conspiracy, written by Dennis Dentwiller for Delta Green, the role-playing game. For more information on Delta Green, please visit delta-green.com. This podcast is intended for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. So, with our last session, the group finally arrived at the Hotel Broadlebin, minus, of course, Cassandra Troy, who uh, took a shotgun round to the face in the library uh, prior to the pursuit through time and space that eventually saw you all arriving at the hotel itself. However, upon arrival, uh, you found Cassandra waiting for you. Uh, looking none the worse for wear, uh, covered in blood, her own blood, but looking alive and relatively unwounded, shaken perhaps. Um, but yes, uh, so you reconvened and uh, checked in to the Hotel Broadlebin, met with Elmer Lissette, who was working the front desk. Very strange, odd, unusual man, but again, uh, it's not saying much considering, you know, everything that's happened. Um you all took some time to kind of rest, go check out your rooms, uh, you know, see, kind of get your bearings and get situated. Uh, you checked out the uh, the dining room uh, where you know you had the uh, automat with the tokens, so you can get you know sandwiches and various sundries. Uh, but of course, at this point, all anybody really wanted to do, understandably, was drink uh, alcohol. And uh, lo and behold, you actually ran into an old. Uh, Acquaintance, friend is probably too strong a term, but maybe acquaintance, uh, Mark Rourke from uh, the Night Floors at the uh, McAllister building, who, of course, had some bootleg moonshine with him that, you know, you all very generously shared. And uh, Mark had uh, essentially said that he was looking for the Whisper Labyrinth as well, which you all have kind of come to understand is your next destination in order to find the bottle of one J.C. Linz, uh, knowing that that is the next step in your uh, journey, for lack of a better term. But uh, Mark had this equipment available, but uh, one had, didn't really know where the entrance to the Whisper Labyrinth was, but suggested you talk to the elevator operator um, a man named, let me look that up real quick, because I am uh, forgetting the name, um, Guido Charlie Antonucci. He recommended you make contact with him, and uh, he might have you do something in exchange for him telling you where to find or how to find the entrance to the Whisper Labyrinth. Uh, Charlie, of course, has, you know, you, you met up and had a little strange little dinner with him in his apartment in the basements of the Hotel Broadlebin, where the employees seem to live. Um, and Guido, or Charlie, essentially offered uh, to give you the information you were looking for in exchange for a, a small service. He needs you all to go up into the vents and uh, kill some rats for him. So uh, I think he gave you all a hammer. He may have given you a hammer uh, prior to uh, showing you the entrance into the vents themselves and setting you loose. And I believe when we ended our last session, you all had just climbed up into the vents. And I think that's as good a place as any to start. Yeah, Unless just any a, questions. a quick note. Um, I think he also gave us a rocket launcher. Ah, yes. Uh, in a tight, confined space. Yep. Yep. That's going to work out real well. Yep. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. Hey, listen, you know. You don't know if um, you don't try. That's right. I mean, it right. will get rid of the rats. That's for sure. So problem solved. <laughs> hey, he didn't say we had to make it out of there alive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, I already got shot in the face with a shotgun, and I'm okay, so. Yeah, so where are we? Are we, it, it, so he led us to the entrance, right? 
So yeah, so he um, kind of opened up a panel uh, in the basement into the vents. So you are now inside the vents. Okay. They're very tight. It's 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 of course you know um, you still have some room to maneuver. It would be tough to turn around, but uh, they're essentially just wider than shoulder width, uh, and you, of course you are you know hunched over on all fours, having to crawl through. Uh, these vents. They appear to be wider in some places, but it is it is quite dark. There is some illumination seeping in from the vents, uh, from uh, other rooms and and the like, but for the most part, it is it is very dark. Did any of us have our cell phones on us? Good question. I believe I have mine and uh, Geneva has hers. That's right. Is is this an age and an era where there would have been flashlights on the phone? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 2018 for sure. Yeah. So maybe, uh, yeah. Cassandra will, uh, mention to, uh, to Geneva, um, maybe turn on the light. It's dark in here. Yeah. She'll go ahead and turn the flashlight on, on her phone and look into the vents a little bit closer to see what exactly the situation is there. I'm assuming it's a small single file where we're going to be crawling kind of thing. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It'd be impossible for you, for you all to be side by side. Um, so you're pretty, pretty much having to conga line it through the vents. Yeah. At what point? <laughs> hmm. She'll kind of be quiet for a second and look at them and be like, I don't know if all of us, <clears throat> I don't know if all of us cramming in their single file one by one will be efficient or just a problem if we need to evacuate quickly. And actually, while while we're on the topic, uh, Geneva and Michael, go ahead and roll luck rolls for me, please. Ah, okay. So, um, Geneva, unfortunately, your phone is is dead. Um, ah, shoot. No longer op- uh, operational. Uh, but Michael, thankfully, yours still has a charge. You're, pro- I would say, you're probably at about fifty percent. Um, but uh, you're able to use the light. Okay, uh, he's actually probably just going to hand the phone to Cassandra. Oh, send yeah, me in there first. <laughs> who's taking? Yeah, who's taking point? And who's got the hammer? Uh, Geneva looks the buffest out of all of us, right? Sure, we can say I have the hammer. I'm good okay. with that. Okay. I mean, cool. I guess I look roughly the buffest. I don't know, Mark. I don't know what Mark's or Michael's strength are, but. I mean, Mark's, the- Mark's okay, except Mark has less than half hit points at this point. Ah, so that's a no. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep him in the middle. Michael Which we is- haven't figured out a way to regenerate hit points at all, have we? Sleep? Sleep through rest. rest. Rest, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we, I mean, we did rest one night in the hotel, right? Does that get me back anymore? Or? Yeah, didn't you guys, I thought you guys rolled. Yeah, we did. Okay, all right. Um, so Michael has a strength of 12 and a 30 with melee weapons. Okay, so I also have a 12. What is my melee weapon? Uh, 40, so slightly better. Okay, so Geneva can take point. And Michael is a coward, so. <laughs> True. <laughs> he will not be doing that. What, what's the score for cowardice? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a very low power. Yeah. <laughs> so then, uh, well, wait, so Geneva... Um, do you want to take point or do you want Cassandra to take point and maybe you behind her with the hammer or I can See, be behind I, you with the hammer? I can be behind you with the phone and you just crawl with the hammer? Yeah, I'm thinking that might make more sense because I feel like it almost makes sense to only have at most two of us in there because if all of us are in there and it's like suddenly we need to like get out quickly because this is not a normal rat, it's going to be like single file line, all of us slowly shuffling backwards. <laughs> and I feel like that will be a recipe for disaster if there's too many of us in there. Okay. But yeah, um, I can head in. Um, I can either take both or if someone wants to accompany me and hold the flashlight. I don't know how big the vent is, if they could angle it to where I could see effectively. Yeah. Like just, uh, uh, Cassandra will just come in behind Geneva and okay. show the flashlight. And we'll say, yeah, you've got enough maneuvering room to be able to kind of hold it up uh, enough to illuminate the path directly in front of Geneva. Okay. Yeah, Geneva heads in then. Cassandra will follow. And who's behind Cassandra? I'm going to guess Michael's at the tail end. 
Uh, no, he'd like to be uh, right smack dab in the middle. Got it. Okay. So, so old Mark Handsome is uh, tailing, is pulling rear security. Got it. Um, so you continue and, and you make your way through illuminated by the uh, bright LED light of Michael's cell phone. Uh, the vents themselves are this nightmare maze of steel tunnels, bronze pipes, furnaces, ventilation shafts, and long abysmal drops to uh, darkness. Um, thankfully, I mean, you're able to kind of crawl over the gaps in the vents and, and prevent from falling, but you, uh, you kind of just, is there any particular direction you want to go in or are you just going to explore what's, uh, how do you want to make a navigation roll? Yeah, maybe a navigation or what's the trick where you just like always go like left or whatever and that way you aren't going in circles or something what's the ne- that maze trick <laughs> something oh, like that yeah. i feel like if we just like if i'm like oh go left here or i'll go north over here let me just take a quick right we're gonna get lost and we're gonna die in these vents <laughs> right not fair enough um so what is your navigation geneva probably not great let me take a look i don't know that i put anything in there uh, yeah, oh yeah just the default 10. yes yeah, okay gus gus had or not gus um Fuck. Uh, Ira had the navigation. That's right. He did, yeah. Okay, so um, we'll just say, yeah, it, it, it takes you, you're with no real clear direction to go in. You just, you make your way through. Um, and, you know, thankfully the way ahead, apart from the cell phone, there is some light bleeding in through vents into various rooms. Uh, you notice that in some places the vents lead up, they lead down, they circle around. It's In some cases they're wider and smaller, um, tighter, uh, but it, it's labyrinthine is probably the best possible way to describe it. Can um, I do an alertness check to see if I hear anything that isn't us or that isn't like just machinery? Absolutely. Yep. Go for it. Nope. Yeah. 95 out of 59. Uh, so it, it, it's hard to make anything out. You know, there's the sound of, you know, the the uh, contorting metal of the vent as you you make your way through, um, you know, the, the sharp sounds of the metal, you know, bending in and then rebounding as you make your way through scuffs of shoes against the surface. Um, it, it very it, it's cacophonous and it's hot. It is hot. These vents. Um, it is just it, it's, it's hard to find your focus, but, um, you know, you are aware of sounds coming in from other rooms. You can hear TVs, you can hear laughter. Um, you proceed through and actually uh, somebody, go, somebody go ahead and roll, uh, somebody else make an alertness roll. I have a pretty high alertness. And I'm assuming the fear is making me very attentive to what's going on. <laughs> Absolutely. Ah, with well, a 79 out of 82. As you're walking, you you pass by a, a vent that's set beneath you. Everybody seems to have kind of passed by it, specifically uh, Geneva and Cassie. But on your way through, you look down and you see a kind of a burgundy carpeted hallway with uh, these plain wooden doors on either side. And you see a, a, a group of four people um, Two women, two men. Dressed, dressed kind of strangely. Dressed, uh, not quite. It has to be from the eighties or the nineties, maybe the nineties. Okay, what are they doing? They're kind of talking amongst themselves, and they they seem to be frantically looking around, discussing, and they look familiar. At least two uh, of them do. Is it young Mark and young Cassandra? It is. Are the other two Ira and Jenny? They are. Oh, shit. Can I drop down into the room? Uh, you cannot. The I vent is... <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> You, look, you notice that the vent is actually, you can see the solder marks around the outside or the, the welding marks around the outside. And it is, it is, you give it a little tug just to see, you know, how, how firmly it's set into the vent. And it's, you couldn't budge it. Mark. Yeah. Take a look at this. 
and Michael will kind of like squiggle his way out of the way. Yeah, Mark will look inside. I do want you to be aware of the fact, Mark, that you are uh, crawling behind a man who is wearing a house coat and tidy whities and nothing else. <laughs> you are very I, glad that you don't have a flashlight, Mark. Yeah, I was I was going to make make some comment about, you know, like sticking my nose in, in Michael's ass, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's extra. But. <laughs> Sorry, that that is a lot extra. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, but you look down and you see. You see yourself, you see Ira, you see Jenny, you see Cassie from a lifetime ago. Roll sanity. You and, and Michael both. Yeah. Okay. I should have expected that. Ooh, that's a failure with a 63. Ooh, yeah, you lose one. I mean, my my sanity is still... You're still doing pretty surprisingly good? Surprisingly high for this game. Good man. I'm at a 57 now. Okay. We'll see what Michael gets. Probably not great. Although Michael has a pretty high sanity too. Uh, for being such a wuss. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 60 out of 45. You also lose one. Well, dang it. Uh, it just... It, it's, it's... You don't remember seeing Vince, uh, Mark in the ceiling, right? Um, so this angle is almost impossible, but it, it with everything else you've seen, it, it's kind of par for the course at this point, right? Um, but you notice the group kind of just make their way past, uh, just like old I mean, times. Oh, God. Do I recognize the place? Is is it the night floors or? Oh, absolutely. 100%. All right. I, I think Mark's going to like um, call down to Ira and say, Ira, don't don't go near the clowns. It's a trap. He doesn't seem to hear you. Yeah. He kind of tails behind the group. Uh, that same very stoic but displeased look on his face uh, as Jenny, as always, takes the lead, leading the group further and further into the night floors. Uh, he doesn't seem to hear you. And Geneva and Cassie, you kind of hear Mark behind you say to not go near the clowns, calling out to someone named Ira, a name you recognize, Cassie, but you not so much, Geneva. What? Mark, what are you, what, who, are you, who are you talking to? Down there. Oh, there. It's us. In the past. I, I don't even know how, how it's possible, but hell. Don't, don't, it's not uh, just just come on it, it what it, it's an illusion it's a trick of the mind it's it's this place fucking with us just come on it's distraction all right and mark mark just you know turns his head away from his friends and follows after cassie you all continue along your way you pass more events. No sign of any rats yet. No, like, rat droppings. No signs of their passage or their even being here. Um, the vents are strangely wet in some places uh, with water, cold water that, that is beginning to warm uh, in the heat of the vent itself. But you pass another vent and you hear the sound of sloshing water. And you look through the vent. I'm assuming Cassie and Geneva, you'd be the first two to find it. And it's a mostly empty room, but you look down and you see a man sitting wide-eyed and wheezing by this oversized wash tub, water covering the wooden floor, a small body floating in the tub itself. Does the body look familiar to us? It's of a child. Oh, shit. So what's his face? You recognize the man. You've seen him in the dining room. And you've seen him at therapy. At group therapy. In the Dorchester house. Yeah. 
very dapper, silk pajamas, but staring at his wrinkled, soaked hands as this body floats face down in the tub. And he's repeating to himself over and over again, the king told me to kill the children. I don't want to kill the children anymore. Yeah, it's that serial killer guy. Whoop. It's it's Darabondi, right? Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. And this this grate is also soldered too, right? It is. Yeah, welded shut. I mean, if you want to try to make a strength roll, see if you can break it open. You know what? Fuck it. Yeah, go ahead and roll strength or athletics, whichever is higher. Well, unfortunately, with with the with a twenty five out of forty five, however, with a, a penalty for the welding, um, it's it's you just can't seem to get it. Um, if you'd rolled a critical success, I would have actually given you the opportunity to pry that thing open so you can drop into the room. But um, that welding is just it, it is tight and it does not budge. Yeah, there'd be a, a bit of a a backup for Mark and Michael as they see Cassandra trying to pry open this this grate and there's this franticness to her. She's kind of slapping and slamming her fist down on the, the grate trying to pull it open. Uh, and the the Darabondi isn't, it, he's acting as if he doesn't hear us, right? Or can't hear us. Right, yep. Yeah. Finally realizing that, she gives up and uh, continues to crawl forward. Geneva, do you do anything? Uh, I don't know that I can <laughs> in, yeah. the vent, in the possession that I'm in. So she's just on alert for whatever the hell is about to happen. You could kick her to her a little if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it. I'll actually have you all, uh, have you two specifically roll sanity rolls. It's your turn this time. Ooh, me? Yeah, you and Geneva. Oh, it's so good at that. There's just like no way you can succeed at this. Oh shit! I I spoke too soon. Ten out of twenty one. You, you doubt me. I doubt you. Ten out of twenty one. You lose nothing. Uh, Geneva with a sixty nine out of forty. You lose one. Is that the first nice. sanity roll you've succeeded this entire game? <laughs> Probably. It's it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Good <laughs> God, while. that is a low. Also- didn't think about this until now and since she lost a sanity roll i guess that makes sense but her whole issue with like enclosed spaces now (laughs) probably she's not doing too hot so i think the reason she does not try to do anything for cassandra is because she's trying to just focus on like breathing and moving forward (laughs) gotcha okay yeah it's it is definitely the walls feel tighter and tighter the deeper you go um and they seem to be closing in more and more but you manage to breathe you keep your focus for the time being, but you don't know how much longer you'll be able to hold out in here. But eventually, uh, somebody, whoever, uh, or all of you, make an alertness roll. Damn, I'm not yeah. doing hot today. 87 out of 83 for uh, Geneva, 25 out of 82 for Michael, 25 out of 59 for Cassie, and 55 out of 76, a critical for Mark. Uh, the three of you here crying ahead you hear it before you see the source and you round a corner and there's a junction of uh, of four vents four passageways one going north south one going east west and the beam of the led light on the cell phone passes over a form a very small, hunched form, curled up, and you see gray, soaking wet, mottled skin, and soaking wet hair, the back of a head, shorts, a child, and just lying there, sobbing, shivering. Geneva, look. Um, I don't think Geneva responds right away, but if you try again, she'll... Geneva. What? Do you see him? I will look now. Do I see the child as well? 
You do. Let's just keep moving. The light passes over it, and this child, a boy, looks over its shoulder towards you, and you see gray, clouded eyes, a mouth struggling for breath as water issues forth from its throat. And it reaches out a hand towards you all. And it begins to crawl towards you. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, 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 no. Where can we go? <laughs> it's, it's, you can try to get past it, but it is crawling towards you. I'm getting my hammer out. And as soon as that thing is within striking distance, if it's like, I don't know how I would gauge if it's being aggressive or if it's just going to be some kind of creepy thing that'll pass by, but like, she's getting ready to attack this thing. You also have your gun. I don't really want to shoot a gun in the vent yet, though. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> if there's ever a time to shoot a gun in a vent. It, it crawls towards you, and it is making this this sickly, like, gasping sound. Like, it, it, it can't breathe. And every time it tries to, more water pours from its, from its mouth. And just... There shouldn't be that much water. How can there be that much water from such a small body? And you can see the tremor in its hand and its arms from shivering. The skin is blue, gray. You can see that it's beginning to slough off in some places. Like it's just been sitting in water for who knows how long. This is very clearly a deceased child. And it, it continues to crawl towards you and crawl towards you. And it reaches out. And it, its fingers, impossibly cold, graze against your arm, Geneva. This might be, I don't even know if I can even do this, but can I tell if it's like reaching to me like it wants help or is it like trying to attack me? It's it, almost impossible to tell. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm not taking chances, so I am striking at it with the hammer. Okay, go ahead and roll your melee. Oh, oh. Shit, I don't have good melee. <laughs> Why did I do this? Okay. A child, Geneva? A dead one, yes. <laughs> it's already it's dead. I'm not the one killing it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, no. oh, 44. I hit myself. <laughs> Again, I am unconscious. <laughs> um, roll 1d4. Actually, no. I'm sorry, because you're in the you're in the lead. I was gonna have you hit Cassandra, but Cassandra's behind you. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> so, um, you you just still processing what it is you're seeing. You go to lash out and strike, and the 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 hammer slips from your fingers. You lose your grip, and and it tumbles to the vent, colliding with the metal with this this deafening thud, and. Uh, this child rakes out with these nails and they scrape across your shoulder for, I mean, it, it's, it, it, it barely even registers it. it you'd see, you know, you feel that you've been scratched, but it, you doubt it's even drawn blood, uh, but it gets closer and closer and it, it is just, yeah, it is on you. And Cassie, you can see this now, this thing, like just this child crawling on Geneva at this point. Uh, yeah, so, um, I'll, I'm gonna, I do have a little bit of unarmed combat experience, so can I use that to try and pull, uh, pull Geneva away from its grasp? Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Um, and Michael, go ahead and roll, or I'm sorry, Mark, roll alertness for me. All right, 45 out of 76, Mark, yeah, um, you look behind you and you see a young girl much like the one now facing Geneva. Gray and blue, very much dead. Something's coming from behind us. Uh, Michael's going to start making a very high-pitched, sort of almost like a keening sound, like a whining in the back of his throat. You Just have kick a gun. It, let it get to you. It. Use it. Cassie, you are able to pull Geneva. Geneva, you feel this sharp tug on your leg that pulls you out just in time before this child wraps its cold, wet arms around you. 
but now you've got one behind you and as you struggle cassie the beam of your light passes over the passages to the left and the right and ahead and you see more of these children crawling towards you and there's no great under us or above us that we can kind of there's break not. off into fuck okay you're surrounded yeah, Michael will just start saying use it, uh, use it over and over again at work. Yeah, I mean, um, if I can get my gun out, I will at this point, I guess. Okay, yeah, we'll say you're able to draw. Seeing them draw their guns, Cassandra closes her ears, like wraps her arms Oh yeah, her ears. smart. <laughs> Everyone is about to like, get some ear damage. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. oh gosh, okay, come on, please don't fuck this roll up, Geneva. And actually, before you before you roll that, everybody go ahead and roll yeah. sanity because you're seeing these ground fucking dead children crawling towards you. That's fair. That sounds fair. Yeah. Work. Ten. God damn. Cassie, you've rolled better than I think you ever had tonight. Um, it's true. It's true. Five out of twenty-one for you. Sixty-four out of thirty-nine for Geneva. Nine out of fifty-seven for Mark. Two out of forty-four uh, for Michael. Those who succeed, you lose one. Cami, uh, Geneva, I need you to roll one d four, please. Two. You lose two. How are you looking? Uh, she's doing fine. She's got a ways to go until another breaking point. She just hit one recently, so she's right on. Good. Okay. All right, you can go ahead and make that firearms roll now. Okay. And is it possible while she's like while she's you know ripping out her gun, can I pick up the hammer, which I presume she just kind of like tosses to the side or? Yes. Yep. You can absolutely pick that up. It's actually the the way it slipped. It's kind of in between you two now, so you can you reach out and find purchase and are able to pick it up in your hand. Okay. I'm actually gonna pass it back to. Uh, maybe I'll pass it back to because Michael, you have a gun, right? No, Mark has my gun. Okay, so I'll pass it back to you then. Okay. Uh, he will... Yeah, he'll take it happily. Well, not happily. He's very upset. <laughs> but he'll take it. Uh, the firearm thing is not going through. Oh, um, yeah, check the... Uh, minimize your character sheet and see if it's popping up with a modifier. No, I see the modifier thing and I hit none and then nothing happens. Oh, oh shit. Gosh. Okay. Um... Well, I guess oh. that's me using the actual like pistol thing. Maybe let me try my firearms because it's the same score. There you go. Yep. I guess I'm use that. Nope. 82 out of 70. I mean, you were just, the, the claustrophobia setting in and, and just seeing these things everywhere now, you just, you pull the shot, you squeeze the trigger and the round goes wide and you can see it impact with a shower of sparks, the vent directly above uh, the closest child, the child closest to you. Um, and it, again, it kind of reaches out in this very weak, half-hearted attempt to like swipe at you and you feel it scratch your chest. Like it's not doing damage to you, but it is, you are going to be easily overwhelmed very, very shortly. Mark, what are you doing in the rear? Um, I think what Mark's going to do is, uh, he, he, he pulls out the, the, uh, the gun, which is a Glock. Yep. Yeah. And um, he's going to use it to just try and, uh, like, beat the child back. Okay. Um, so I guess that's an our um, melee? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say melee. Okay. Since you're using it as, like, a melee weapon at this point, yeah, that would be the most appropriate roll. Okay. Oh, that's a failure with 83 out 83 of 30. 83 30, yeah. You, you, you go to swipe and, and the, 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 this, you find yourself thinking, my God, I'm about to brain a child with the butt of this Glock. And just unconsciously, maybe you just, you pull it at the last second and, and you hit, you hit its shoulder and it doesn't even cry out. Uh, it just, it opens its mouth again, like this, this dying gasping fish and water just pouring pouring from inside Michael what do you do Michael will, I think he's going to try and reach past Mark and hit the kid with a hammer go for it go ahead and roll melee my melee is not good Ooh, 49 out of 30 yeah same you almost hit Mark but in these tight quarters um, yeah it's it's tough 
And I think uh, he's going to say when he takes a swing with the hammer, he's going to go, if you're not going to use the gun, give it to me. Yeah, Cassie, what do you what do you do? Yeah, I was actually just by force uh, seeing that Geneva is just shaken. Uh, I was going to, if I could, take the gun out of her hands uh, and fire. Okay, yeah. If, if Geneva is okay with that. If Geneva really I would, pushes. In her state, I don't think she would. I think she's too, like the failing two sanity checks down here, being in like enclosed spaces and actively being attacked. I think she's hanging on to that gun for dear life, unfortunately. I thought you knew you how to shoot. <laughs> Geneva shoots Cassandra. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't know if there's a penalty, but could I like come up behind her then and like kind of direct her? her and like use my finger to pull the trigger but just still with her hands on the gun oh um that would be tough to do you do have the hammer and you can try to try to swipe past her and hit the hit the, the closest child i'm just gonna I hit Geneva and take the gun no um uh no i you know what i'll do is uh seeing that uh, geneva's kind of struggling to fire um uh i with my bare hands am going to try and reach out to the child and just like plunge my thumbs into its eyes. Okay, go ahead and roll unarmed. Ooh. Oh, man. Um, We're doing good. We're doing great tonight. Yeah. Um, you, oh, wow. You go, to, you go to lash out and strike at this child and you clock Geneva in the back of the head. Uh, Geneva, you just, you lose one hit point. Your bell is rung a little bit. You find yourself dazed slightly from the, from the force of the blow. But uh, yeah, just it's panic is starting to set in now. Um, Yeah. And I would just say, just to, if I could add on that, um, like Geneva would see that Cassandra just looks very feral and focused. Like she's just kind of snapping and trying to violently get out as quickly as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're cornered animals at this point. Um, we'll say with that Geneva, what do you do next? Is it just the one child in front of me or are there like multiple? You now see multiple, you now see anywhere from four to six on various sides of the vents coming in. And how much space are they taking up? Like, could I probably with the right role, just try to like power through them, just like get them out of the way and move through them? Yeah. I'd say with an athletics role, um, you can try to just kind of try to just brute force your way past. Ugh, my athletics isn't great. Um, okay. I'm going to try it. Um, I want to use my unarmed combat because that's the best. So I want to try and just like grab the head of the one closest to me in front of me and just like bash it up against the side of the vent. Beautiful. Try to take that one out so then I can move forward and get to the next one and just keep doing that. You got it. Go ahead and roll. <sighs> Man, I you wish got, I had like got this. actual like physical dice so I could throw away the bad ones. I know, right? <laughs> Finally. There we go. 26 out of 83. Geneva, just with, with this almost feral show of strength, you, you you cry out, you shout, and you just cop the side of this child's head and crush it against the side of the vent, and its head caves in. Uh, you see brain and this black, just ichor that was once blood draining and oozing from this this now caved in side of its face uh, and it collapses to the ground twitching yeah. but now motionless sweet yeah the plan will be whenever she gets a turn she's moving forward and doing that to all of them that she can come across got it okay uh, Mark we'll say you're up next alright uh, at this point Mark uh, has uh, kind of flipped over so his feet are in front of him he's sitting on his butt um, and he, he grabs the, the gun in two hands, having heard uh, Michael's words. And, you know, uh, surprisingly, you know, this, this almost taunting uh, spurs him on. And he, uh, he takes a, a shot at the um, one in front of him. Okay. That is... Ah! 28 out of 50, yeah. 
You you remember this drill from the FBI Academy? Um, you you were trained and taught to shoot from all manners of positions on the ground, lying on your stomach, on your back, and you focus on that front sight that is glowing, that the tritium glowing in the darkness of this vent and you focus on that site you squeeze the trigger and the round impacts this child's eye at the left one and blows it out the back of her skull and she falls to the ground to, to the bottom of the vent motionless we gotta get out of here that's my turn beautiful okay michael um I think he's having a hard time like swinging the hammer in the tight space, so he's gonna slip it through the like tied belt of his robe. Uh, I just I love the fact that Michael is still running around in this bathrobe. I love yeah, it. You, you better believe it. Uh, and he's going to do uh, try and do the same thing as Geneva. He's gonna try and grab one of the kids and just brute force smash their head into a surface to get them to stop. Got it. Okay, go ahead and roll unarmed. God diggity damn it. <laughs> 84 out of 70. Yeah, you you see this this another boy crawling up behind this this now motionless corpse of this little girl and you go to grab its head but you it overextend and it grabs your arm and it almost climbs up it towards you to get closer and you feel the water just dripping over your flesh and it is an unsettling feeling um but you just can't seem to get a hold of it and it, you see its nails rake your skin leaving these these pale pink and red scratches um as its fingernails kind of just drag uh, not enough to do any damage but uh he starts screaming for help um uh, in quite a quite a high-pitched tone okay uh cassie uh, seeing this happening right behind me, I'm going to try and boot it in the face. Well, so you'd have to go pat, you have to boot past, uh, Michael and then Mark. So you're still pretty far separated from them. No, I, well, oh, oh, I thought that the, I thought that the child creature was attacking Michael. It, it, oh, that's right. Yep. Good call. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's, thank you. Um, yeah, the child has worked its way past Mark up towards Michael. So yeah, you can, you can try to kick it in the, in the, in the face. So go ahead and roll your unarmed. 19 out of 68. Well done. Yeah. Uh, you, what kind of, what kind of, are, is she like, is Cassie wearing like boots? Is she wearing shoes? Like what, what does she have on? Um, she's just really, I think she has really shitty docks on or like okay. rip, you know, uh, imitation docks. Yeah. Um, or just like regular weird, like work boots, but nothing's nothing spectacular. Yeah. You, you kick out and the heel of the boot, just connects with the cheek of of this this child and the face caves in almost too easily um but it too falls on top of michael this black blood now draining from its from this gaping wound in its skull onto onto him and his his robe geneva you're up all right i mean crawling forward trying to give us a path ahead for people to follow so come on to the next kid and trying to bash its poor little head in <laughs> all right Ooh, two out of 83 um actually you know what we'll do so you go with that cassie go ahead and roll unarmed 56 out of 68 very nice michael um are you wanting to continue to try unarmed combat to kill these things oh yeah for sure well, i think he's just doing it Based on instinct, now, thrashing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, like less, um, less planned and more just like wildly kicking. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and roll. All right. Forty-nine out of seventy. Very nice, Mark. Uh, gun or uh, fisticuffs? I think at, at this point, Mark is just uh, kind of uh, sitting on his butt, pushing with his feet, backpedaling, and every now and then just kicking out at the the. Uh, creatures coming towards him so that'd probably be unarmed yep all right oh damn 72 out of 69 72 out of 69 so geneva cassie michael just now you know relying solely on this instinct to survive on your just gross motor skills on your fists and your feet and your legs. You just lash out elbows and, and strikes and kicks and blows. And you just cut through this 
mob, for lack of a better term, of these dead, drowned children reaching out to you, scratching at your skin, and you you crush skulls, you kick faces, you break bone and tear flesh, and eventually uh, you all have, have, you realize that you are now surrounded by the still corpses of these things, of these children. Um, and there don't seem to be any more coming. All told, there has to be a dozen. Roll sanity. Who? Yeah, that's a... It's a tough thing to get there. Oof, yeah. Mark, with a 37 out of 56, you lose one. Geneva with a 59 out of 37. Cassie with a 47 out of 20. And uh, Michael with a 72 out of 44. Uh, go ahead and roll 1d4. One, one for Cassie, one for Michael, three Oof. for Geneva. Oof. Oof, indeed. Um, that you lose that much sanity, respectively. Yeah, Geneva is not having a good time. <laughs> having a great time. <laughs> Whoops. Oh. There we go. How is Mark on sanity? Yeah, how, how is Mark doing? Mark's doing okay, okay actually. Uh, he got a lot of sanity back when we finally made it to the night floors. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you got a uh, you got a surge of sanity back when you arrived at the the brothel bin. Mhm. Oh, yeah, yeah, not the night floors, the brothel bin. Yeah. Uh, but you all are now alone, the four of you, in this, this at this juncture, and you see the small, just lifeless forms of these children. And and it was easy to see them as adversaries, as something to be killed in, in order to survive. I'm doing this to pull some. Okay. What's the uh, What's the plan? We keep going. I get yeah, <laughs> fine. I think Geneva is looking for an exit at this point. She's ready to be done with this. Okay. Uh, oh, Michael, were you gonna say something? Uh, he'll probably just uh, one take a couple of like deep hyperventilating breaths uh, and then go. Was that it? Do you think this is the? These are the things they wanted us to deal with. That would be my guess. Okay, well, well we did it then. Uh, we're done, right? Yep, let's get the fuck out of here. You think this is it? I mean, how could it get worse? I mean, I don't think any of us came in here expecting actual literal, literal rats, did we? I don't know what I came in expecting. Didn't come in expecting this. Uh, Geneva, go ahead and roll luck. Hey, here we go. 43 to 50. All right, we got those. We got those bad rolls out of the way. Hopefully, Jesus. You're able to backtrack. And despite the the never-ending maze-like structure that you find yourself crawling in, you're eventually able to make yourself make your way back to the sole open vent you remember seeing, the one that you entered through, uh, this this panel, and you crawl back down into the basement of the Hotel Brottlebin. And uh, you see Charlie there waiting for you, a book in one hand, a drink in the other. He looks up. Oh, done already! Are we, like, covered in whatever the hell was left over from these kids? Absolutely, yes. And it stinks. God, does it smell. Yeah, Geneva just gets out and <laughs> uh, maybe breathes a little bit of a relief not being in that confined space anymore, but hand, or she's, I guess she didn't have the hammer, so she can't hand it to him, but she just says, Got him. Well, how many did you take out? Like a dozen, maybe, give or take. I don't know. It was dark. Jesus. All right. Well, that's off to you. Nicely done. Why did you need them taken care of? 
well, you get enough of them up in the vents, the so guests start complaining. It's it's a whole thing. It's a whole to do, you know. They start complaining about what the noise or the fact that it's just symbols of guilt running around through the vents. Probably both. So we did that because they can't take accountability for what they did. Who who's they? You know who we're talking about, who I'm talking about. Hey, listen. The guests don't like them. Crying in the vents, keeping people up. We got a service to provide. And you did a great job. I appreciate it. You wouldn't you wouldn't happen to have any more of that hooch, would you? Hey, you can have the rest of this. He hands it to you. And uh, Michael takes a very hearty swig. It is it is like rock up bourbon. It's not great, but it gets the job done. Yeah, I think he's trying to wash the taste of the smell of that stuff out of his mouth. So it's probably better than than that. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, I guess uh, time for me to fulfill my end of the bargain, huh? Yes. All right. You all want to clean up first, maybe? Just give us what we came for, what you promised us. I'd like to clean up. Maybe put some pants on, too. I was thinking of just getting a fresher robe. He smiles. <laughs> yeah, she kind of... There's the barest hint of a smile on one of the corners of her lips. All right. Uh, room 830. Wait for the sommelier. Follow him. I'll take you to where you need to go. Is this a standing offer, or do, the, do we have time to actually shower? Because I, I could actually use a shower. I all the time in the world here. Of course. And uh, Cassandra will start to walk away back uh, to wherever we came in through. Yeah, and Charlie will lead you back to the elevator, take you back up to your floor, let you off at uh, at your rooms. Yeah. Uh, Cassandra says nothing, but she'll go back to her room and uh, freshen up, I guess. Yeah, same. Nice. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we established it last time, but is the uh, is the I think it was the mirror in the in my bathroom. Is it fixed again after it I broke is. it? It is. Okay. Uh, yeah, she'll take a she'll take a shower, and then when she's done, she's gonna head to Mark's room first. So okay. Mark, Mark's gonna take a shower too, uh, but before he takes a shower, um. We still had our wallets on us, right? Or did those get taken as well? Mark pulls out his wallet. um, And he goes uh, in the back, folded over. There's a kind of a large picture from uh, when his wife was was still alive. And there's a picture of Sharon and all the kids. And he looks at them. And eventually, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. And he uh, he goes over to the toilet, and he takes a picture, and he rips it up, and he throws it in and flushes it. Okay. Uh, then he goes and takes a shower. Yeah, I'd say just as you're wrapping up, uh, just as you turn off the water and begin to towel off, you hear a, a knock at the door. Well, Mark throws a good a robe on. If it's good enough for Michael. Yeah. <clears throat> Goes to the door and opens it up. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Cassandra there uh, in her usual getup, uh, though I guess cleaner because of, well, not, well, not cleaner now uh, since she got uh, undead water soaking all, everything she's wearing. But, um, but yeah, she's there. Uh, hair is also wet. Didn't tell dry. Hey, uh, uh, I, I, I didn't expect you. Um, how's it going? Just, um, I figured 
come see you before we get the others. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. That was something, wasn't it? You had kids, right? Have, have still. Jimmy, Sally, Hank, and Bubba. They're, they're the. Oh, there's something special. I can help, but in those kind of flashes where things seemed clear, uh, I couldn't help but. And I know it wasn't one of them, but I couldn't help but see Brad's face. Oh, don't think that. Don't think that. They, they were gone. They were transformed. They were something else. The more you think about things like that, the more this place is just gonna mess with your mind. I just keep asking myself. I just keep asking myself, what did we do to to have all of this? deal with all of this to go through it a long time ago we said yes we should have said no is that enough to send us to hell just Look, say yes <clears throat> yeah I think so I mean it was pride wasn't it I thought when they came to me I was I was so gosh darn proud. After, after all the things I tried to do at the academy and failed, somebody saw the potential in me and I, I wanted to live up to it. This was my chance and, well, pride might be the greatest sin of all. Why do you say yes? I guess it was my job. And because I thought the things that I, I've seen, the things that I did, would make more sense if I did say yes. Does it? Does it make any sense at all? No. No, it doesn't. You know, <laughs> I don't know if I ever told you guys this, but probably silly but when I joined the FBI I I thought I was gonna become famous I thought I was gonna crack some amazing case or take down some like extremely dangerous cartel bad MF -er, you know I thought I thought they were gonna make a movie about me I don't even want that anymore just one out. Cassandra's, when you've been talking, has just been looking at the ground, uh, sort of at her boots, but more at the floor in between them, uh, looking at the pattern in the carpet. Uh, and then when he finishes, she just stands up. I what do you I want? Could... Go ahead, sorry. I thought I could help people. I thought that was enough. I thought it was genuine enough to just want to help. I don't know what sin that is to think that you can help. And I don't know, maybe it's pride. Maybe I thought I was good enough to help other people. Maybe some people are beyond help. Probably some people like us. And I hope not. Cassandra will just turn and start to walk out towards uh, and head towards the others. Cassie? Mark puts his hand on, on her shoulder. What? You're a good person. I know you don't see it all the time. But I see it. You are. You just gotta believe in yourself. And if you can't, well, I do. She just doesn't pull away, it just more like slides out of your grasp and doesn't say anything, but uh, walks down the hall. Uh, I think she'll head towards, she'll head towards Michael's room. 
So, uh, Michael had uh, taken off his robe. Is there another? Is there a fresh robe in the room, or is there only the one? There is. There's a fresh robe. Okay, he's gonna have a hot shower and get into another robe. <laughs> Um, and spend, yeah, spend a little time just kind of looking in the mirror, maybe trying to make himself look as, as presentable as possible. He doesn't really have any supplies or anything, but if there's a comb in the bathroom, he'll comb his hair and stare at his reflection for, I guess, until somebody comes and knocks on the door. What does, uh, Geneva do during this time? I think she just uh, showers, cleans up, and then takes a minute, um, having not been in a good mental place in the vents and feeling like she maybe let the others down because it took her so long to get her shit together to bust through those, whatever they were, dead kids. Um, I think she takes a minute and tries to collect herself and... She doesn't really like have a ritual, like a hype ritual or anything. It's more just like looking in the mirror and trying to center herself and get focused and get back in the headspace of, you know, being the person that gets shit done. Okay. Yeah, we'll say eventually, uh, Michael, you you hear knock on your door. He'll answer it. Uh, and he's got the hammer tucked in the uh, the little like rope belt of his new. Robe. Is this your superhero outfit? It's, uh, honestly, it's just comfortable. I mean, if you're gonna die, it might as well be comfortable, right? Exactly. <laughs> and I kind of want to know if I do I come back in this or do I come back in the thing that I was wearing when I got into the hotel or do I not come back at all? Well, I came back in the same clothes I was wearing when I got shot in the head. Yeah. This place cleaned them up at least. Very considerate. Yeah, blood can be really hard to get out of clothing, but they really did a spot-up job. Are you ready, Cassandra? Is that why you're here? I don't know. I feel like... I am. I... We just keep doing this, and it's... I just want it to end. I don't care how, I just want it to end. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I keep trying to, um... Like, we don't have a choice, right? We don't have, We don't get to decide whether or not we participate in this. And I keep trying to convince myself of that, to use that as a means to not be afraid. What is there to be afraid of if you don't get to make any decisions? You know, if things are inevitable, then what's the point? But, you know, then we get swarmed by a pack of dead kids or somebody dies or I don't know. I forget that I shouldn't be afraid. There's no point. I think that I think that's what keeps us being human is uh, is the idea of thinking that something is inevitable, but we're just animals. All animals, well, most any that have any kind of understanding of their own existence, when it's threatened, will fight it. Will fight trying to die. Unless they know it's their time. Maybe... Maybe... Maybe it's just, I know it's my time at least. I'm tired of fighting. Yeah. Yeah, me too. How do you think this ends? Just out of curiosity. I don't know. Right? I got no fucking idea. I just hope however it ends, it stops with us. <laughs> oh, fuck me. That's so arrogant. Uh, I, don't, I don't think. I mean, I hope so, too, but I don't think so. <laughs> I don't uh, think we're that important. Yeah, we probably aren't. I mean, 
Clearly there are others who've been through this or are a part of it. They existed. Maybe we'll just end up in the night floors. Maybe we'll have maybe we'll have rooms there. Maybe you'll get to wear your robe for the rest of eternity. I can get behind that. What's that saying that people say? Grist for the mill? I think that's more of what we are. But having said that, maybe we should just get to grinding. Maybe I'll ask Geneva. She has something uh, a bit less dowdy to wear for our death, or my death at least. These robes are pretty comfortable. I know you got one in your room. Yeah, yeah, I do. I should probably just check on Geneva anyway. She was, uh, she was pretty freaked out in the, the vents. Yeah, I'll come with you. Okay. And he'll follow her up. Yeah. And Geneva, yeah, you hear that knock on your door, and when you go to the peephole, you see uh, Cassie and Michael waiting outside. Yeah, she takes a second takes a breath, and then we'll open it. Hey, come on in. Uh, the the dude, um, Charlie, he gave me his, like, little jar of shine, right? No, 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 he had, like, a flask. Oh, okay. And he didn't say you can keep it, did he? No. Oh, okay, I thought I heard that. If I had, I would be drinking it now, but... Uh, <laughs> Wishful thinking, maybe. <laughs> we don't have mini bars. No. No, it's a dry hotel. Remember, this is hell. I mean, it's really hell—a dry hotel. Yeah, it's the worst yeah. fucking place on earth. Uh, yeah, Cassandra will go in, uh, and I imagine Michael will too. But when she does, she's gonna just kind of like drift over towards like whatever kind of closet or wardrobe is in the room, and maybe like. Just without permission, just start, of, start going through the clothes. Well, so, I mean, you all really don't have other, anything other than what you're wearing. Oh, that's right. You're right. Scratch that then. Um, yeah, she'll kind of drift in, go to the wardrobe and open it, or a closet or whatever she has. Um, opening it, expecting to see what, you know, what you usually bring to a hotel, you know, um, a change of clothes and... When she opens it, she realizes what they're in and where they're at and size. Were you looking for something? Just something. I don't know. I, I just something else. All right. Well, apparently it's not there, but are we ready? Are you ready? Yes. Can I do a human check to see if she's telling the truth? <laughs> yeah, go for it. And uh, yeah, you can do either persuade or counter human if you want, uh, Geneva. Oh no. Or with an 81 out of 69, yeah. Yeah, I mean... Do you want me to roll since she failed as well? No, no, no. In, in that case, yeah. What, is, what does she see? What What do you think she sees? I think Geneva looks like everything is normal and completely fine, and she's prepared to move on to the next stage of whatever the fuck is happening. Like, she just seems very calm. Maybe not confident, but, like, calm and ready to move forward. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go get Mark then. And, uh... Go where we need to go. Sounds good. So did we establish that there's laundry service at the hotel? You did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that's how Cassie got the blood out of her hoodie. Yeah. Mark. Mark uh, is going to, um, you know, take his clothes and put them in a bag and put them outside in the hall. And. Um, how long does it take? Like, eh, who knows? It could be hours. Okay. Well, I guess in the meantime, the only other thing I have is a robe. But he's gonna keep his shoes because uh, you can't send your shoes for laundry service. He's just yeah. gonna 
I'm just going to do his best to like uh, use the sink to wash his shoes and and, and socks. Okay. Um, got it. Okay. So yeah, you'll be in a robe as well with, uh, with your shoes and socks. Okay. The socks are still wet. That's never, never a nice, never a nice feeling, but they're somewhat clean. And, uh, you all reconvene and do you, do you go that straight for the elevator? Yeah. Let's, yeah, I think so. that, let's do like a briefing or something like that beforehand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's just go. I mean, we don't really have much information to go on other than the room number. I think as they're walking towards the elevator at one point, Michael will lean a little closer to Geneva and just be like, you good? Yeah, I'm good. She gives a little bit of a nod. He gives her a little side eye, but then like a little nod as well. Okay. Okay. I think I will say I think Michael has probably known her enough to know that even when she is incredibly like stressed, she gets in this head state of I'm just gonna keep moving forward and fuck all distractions and he might be able to tell if that's kind of the headspace that she's in now. Sure. Yeah, I think he expects that. Like even just based on your description of Geneva's personality, like I Brett expect that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like he's still like for he still asks that question, even though he knows he's not going to get uh, a legitimate answer, just to let her know that he's around, you know? Yeah, for sure. Like, I know you don't need it. I know you're not going to use it. But if you need to talk, I'm around. Cool. Well, with that, you head to the elevator. And, of course, Charlie uh, eventually arrives and takes you all up to the eighth floor. Uh, on the ride up, he says, "That fellow Rourke is uh, should be waiting for you up there." Yeah. Uh, Wait, did he call him Phil Rourke? No, fellow Rourke. I think is what. Vincent, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, that fellow Rourke. Yep. Oh, that fella. Okay. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that fellow Rourke is uh, up there waiting for you. Perfect. Let's go. I never thought I'd be happy to see that guy. <laughs> Here we are. You get up to the eighth floor and follow the signs for room 830. And uh, kind of before you make that turn down that part of, of the hallway, uh, you see Mark there uh, waiting for you. He's got uh, a couple mining helmets. He's got some rope. He's got some lanterns. He says, oh, Charlie said you uh, you took care of that rat problem he had, huh? Sure did. We did. Well, you, uh, you ready to do this? Does it matter? I guess it don't. Hey, here. And he, uh, he'll hand you two uh, battery-powered uh, like mining helmets with the, uh, the lamp on the front and uh, two lanterns. With uh, that are already filled with oil and a, a spool of rope. Are we going spelunking? Oh, that's right. You ain't been down there yet, have you? No. Yeah, you'll see. I, uh, the place, it, uh, it's someplace different every time. That's why I can't go back myself. What was it like when you were there? Doc. Doc and cold. Well, then I guess these will come in handy. Thank you. Michael will reach for one of the helmets. Yeah, who takes what? So we got Michael getting a mining helmet. So it's two helmets, right? Yeah, two helmets, two lan lanterns. And Mark's got his own of each. Uh, I'll take a lantern. I'll grab a lantern as well, I guess. Mark will take a helmet. Sorry, I'm writing down who takes what for no reason. Um, yeah, of course uh, right. There's rope as well, right? Yep, spool of rope. Yep. Yeah, Mark will take the rope. With that, you all make your way to room 830 and 
you don't know what you're expecting, but Mark kind of gestures for you to wait. And you don't know how long you're waiting there. But eventually, the door opens and a marionette kind of glides out from the door, suspended from the ceiling with these strings. And once again, you look up now and you can see those tracks that seem to run everywhere through the hotel, down the hallways, into the rooms, just tracks upon tracks in the ceiling. And this marionette glides out, wearing these dark purple silk robes, velvet slippers, and a pale mask with a fine silver corkscrew hanging from this long satin cord around its neck. Within its hands, it has a bottle. And uh, Mark Rourke kind of nudges you, Mark Handsome, and says, "Ah, that's him, that's the the sommelier. He'll take us there, we just gotta follow him. Does it offer the bottle to us or? It actually, it doesn't even seem to register your presence. It, you just follow it. All and right. Yeah, Mark, Mark just steps out of the way and closely follows it. I'm sorry, did you say it was our size or it says like smaller? It's, it's, a hum, it's like an average human size, maybe 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, okay. Not creepy at all. And do you all follow? Yeah. Yeah, Mark Rourke isn't waiting. He just, he books it. He takes off following this thing very closely. And you all, kind of hot on his heels, I assume, uh, but with Rourke very clearly leading the way. And you follow this thing, this this thing called the sommelier, this marionette. And you follow it down the staircase, more and more stairs, down hallways. Not really paying much attention to the directions you're heading in or where you're going, except ever downward until you're back in those familiar basements and then even deeper and deeper until you realize it's getting darker and darker. And you notice that the walls have kind of maybe at some point transitioned from brick and mortar and wood to granite to this porous gray stone and eventually you lose track of the sommelier but when you round the next corner you're there at this crumbling archway through which is nothing but just this all-encompassing inky blackness and this chill draft blowing from within. And upon seeing it, Mark Rourke instantly just shoves past you all and sprints headlong into this labyrinth, swallowed by this darkness. You can hear his footsteps as he runs, and eventually those two fade away. Cassandra will turn on the lantern to try and see if she can at least catch what direction he went in by the time you do even from out here the light doesn't penetrate very far and he's gone I will turn my helmet lamp on I will as well I'm guessing uh, Geneva and Cassie you light up your lanterns yeah mine was yeah. Turn it up. Yeah. yeah do you all do you all do anything with the rope is there oh, tie, to tie it to each other. We should all go in a little line. Is there maybe something to anchor it to, though? Like a like a pole or a, a pipe or something like that? Just in case, like, we need, like, you know, to have something to guide us back here? Unfortunately, not here. And even if you did, it, 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 there's, it doesn't seem to be that much rope to where, um, like, eventually at some point, depending on how deep this thing goes, you may run out. You'll likely run out. Okay. Well then, yeah, I'll do it. I think, yeah, uh, what Michael said about tying each other, that might not be a bad idea. It's actually a very good idea. Um, so yeah, you uh, you all secure the rope around yourselves, kind of forming a tight line between each other 
and with your sources of illumination, you venture forth into the Whisper Labyrinth. And I think that's a good place to take a break for now. So you step into the labyrinth and into this black, into this cold, this chill breeze seeming to emanate from everywhere and nowhere at once. You notice that there's a smallish circular stone room with these three damp and narrow hallways leading off into the darkness. Uh, these tunnels are, again, absolutely black. Where do you go? I don't suppose home is an option. It is not. Forward? Is there anything on our notes that points to direction? Like, I know that we, there's that map. You do have the map. That's, that's like, in-game, even. Yep. Yeah. The... The letterhead. The letterhead, correct. Right. So there's the elevator. Huh. So right off the bat, there's not like a, a circular room with a lot of places radiating off of it. Right. But you do have a general idea. If you want to try to make a navigation roll, you may do so. Mine is ass, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, mine's just the default. Same here. What's yours, hey. Mark? I, I mean, default. Yeah, I feel like Mark should have been a Boy Scout, right? He should have some navigation skills, but right. Well, I'll give you a, uh, I'll give you a twenty twenty percent bonus with the map. So that uh, gives you a thirty percent. So give it a shot. All right, Mac, it, Mark. Mark. Mark will uh, pull out the the map. Look around and say, I don't know, this doesn't look familiar, but I guess this way. Uh, navigation. There's so many things to choose from. 45 out of 10. Uh, well, so 45 out of 30. Uh, Still so a failure. Cl close, yeah. Um, you begin walking. And uh, are you are you in the lead? Who's in the lead? I was going to say Geneva, but maybe we don't. <laughs> I mean, since Mark has the map, I'm assuming he would be in the lead. Yeah, Mark, yeah, Mark, will, those Mark will be in the lead, too, sure. right? Okay. Does so Mark, Mark have one of those hat lanterns, too? He does. He yes. has the helmet. Yep. Okay, so that'd be helpful. Yeah. So it's very much like that sailor alone adrift on the sea at night that light only cuts so far in front of you um and you begin leading them mark down one of the hallways but you very quickly find as you notice in that first room that the map in your hand on this hotel brothel bin letterhead um or the, the map that you remember from the hotel brothel, brothel bin letterhead does not correspond exactly to the labyrinth in which you now find yourself uh it is very easy to get turned around and turned around you are. Um, maybe it was one too many turn, but but you find yourself now encompassed in blackness in one of these tunnels and not entirely sure where you are. But you look around, all of you do, and in every wall are these small alcoves and shelves and shelves, and each one holds this opaque bottle. There are literally tens of thousands. And each glance, you know, even though you, you, you don't study them for, for very long, you notice that uh, no two are alike, at least not at first glance. They're short, tall, fat, skinny, ornate, plain, constructed from any number of materials. And each one has a name on it. Each one stopped with a cork or a lid. They are everywhere. Any names that we recognize just off the bat or? Roll search. Yeah, I'm going to be looking for mine for sure. 73 out of 73 for Cassie. Are you looking for anything specifically? God damn it. Just a not name that I would recognize. So not at first, not in this in this portion of the labyrinth, no. Okay. 
Any but bottle as, that that uh, would match the initials W L. W L or J L. Uh, well, there's a W L on the on the map. Yes. So uh, whisper, <clears throat> wh- whisper labyrinth, and then there should be a J L bottle, I believe. Yeah. Right. Oh, so W L is whisper labyrinth. Oh. Okay. Well, not that you, not, not that Mark would know that, but yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so none, actually, let me look at the, cause I, I, I even forget what the hell. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned Whisper Labyrinth before, but I didn't make the connection. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So there it is. Uh, JL bottle. Yeah. So no bottles with the, uh, actually you go ahead and roll a search. 50 out of 78. Okay. Um, you don't find any with WL or JL. But as you as you venture forth, as you venture on, you eventually come across a bottle on the floor, and it looks like it's been opened. Do you uh, examine further? Yeah, what's the name on it? Mark Rourke. That tricky dick. Hmm. And there's nothing inside of it, right? It's just empty. Just empty. Yeah. And all, all are, are all of these bottles empty and just corked, or do, is there like a substance in the, some of them? No substance from what you can tell. They're all opaque, but like glancing down okay. into the bottle uh, with Mark Rourke's name on it, you don't see anything inside. And there doesn't seem to be any like trace liquid. Like you, you upend it, try to pour something out, give it a little shake, and nothing, nothing comes from out from from inside. Okay. I guess he finally found his bottle. But why That'll make him happy. But why just leave it behind and open? Why, why not just... I don't know, destroy it or take it? Maybe all you gotta do is find it. Are all, all the bottles are empty, right? Well, they're opaque. They're opaque, gotcha. But, if, if, but most you... of the bottles we're seeing have are stoppered. They are stopped. Yes, they all either have a lid or a cork in the top. Cassandra's going to take up just a random bottle and just kind of like see if the weight shifts or if she hears anything that's inside. It doesn't. It feels like almost like an empty wine bottle. Okay, that makes sense. So what do you do next? Mark's going to hold out a hand to Cassandra, not to the bottle. Can I can I see something? Yeah, sure. And she'll give it to him. He takes the bottle and attempts to uncork it. It's the strangest thing, Mark. No matter how hard you pull, it's not like a, like a like a, a wine bottle, right? Where you need a corkscrew to uncork it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the cork is is standing out from the lip of the bottle enough to where you're actually able to grab it and. No matter how hard you strain, no matter how hard you pull, Cassie, you see his skin flushing with the effort. You just, you you can't pull it out. Mark. Mm, yeah? It's not your bottle. Yeah. <laughs> kind of glad that I couldn't open it. I don't know what I would have done if I could. Mark will put the bottle back on the shelf. Would you like to roll another navigation roll, Mark? I'll give it a shot. Why not? All right. Oh, <laughs> even worse of a failure. Yeah, 65 out of 10. A lot of 30. Out of 30 in this case, yeah. Um, again, you lead them further into the labyrinth, and there is, there is nothing. Um, you walk through the darkness, and you hear from deep within the depths of this labyrinth you hear cries you hear shouts you hear people calling for help that they're lost what do you do how and this may be a bit of a stretch acoustically though how like how like do we get a sense of like the height of this place yeah so looking up um like hoisting your lantern uh you, you kind of take a look up above and you can see that the ceiling maybe extends for another three feet above you. Okay, but there's a ceiling though. It's not like this like open. Correct, at least in this part of the labyrinth, yeah. Okay. 
And do we get a sense from where, which direction the shouting's coming from? Uh, yeah, vaguely. Um, ahead, you know, deeper in. So, we've met people in, in places like this before. And they weren't bad, necessarily. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to, to, to go and help them. Is that crazy? We have to find them first. We don't even know what they are at this point. They might not be people. They could be like those kids. Yeah. I I just I mean, if there's somebody down here, maybe we can help them or, or they can help us. I feel like it's better than wandering around here without any clue. Uh, Michael will kind of shrug to that. I mean, I don't have a better idea. Yeah, Mark yeah. looks looks at Geneva and, and Cassie. What do they think? Cassandra looks pretty much the same, uh, helpless. <laughs> it's a lead, sure, but we shouldn't go... Excuse me. We shouldn't go with the intention of these being people that we can save. Honestly, at this point, we can't risk any distractions. No, we haven't been able to save anybody. I don't think our job here is to save people. No. no. All right, Mark's, Mark's going to do his best to head towards the calls that he hears. As you kind of maneuver down these tunnels, um, one voice begins to ring a little clearer than the others. A man's voice, maybe middle-aged. And he is saying the name Temperance over and over again. Temperance, help me, Temperance. Out of character, did we know? I mean, we, we were there when we, we found out that that was Jenny's name? Nope. No. No. Okay. She okay. died. Yeah. That was a out of character thing that I revealed. She died before you guys found out. Oh, okay. Okay. Never mind. Well, I think well. maybe, and Vince, please confirm this. I think maybe you were there when she was called that, but I don't think she, she ever confirmed it. Like, that's, yes, that's who I am. But right. I think th- right. During like the therapy session, the guy was like, hey, temperance. And she like wouldn't respond. Correct. Yep. Called you temperance gain fry. Yeah. But that was the closest that that and, and you never confirmed it one way or another. But I mean, that definitely made an impression on Mark because I, mean, totally. I remember at the time, like going back to my notes and going, wait a second. I've heard that name before. Yep. Well, in, in any case, this is the voice that's coming out clearer. So Mark will. Well, you know, uh, navigate such that he, he turns toward the, every time there's a there's a choice. He goes down the hallway where the voice seems to be coming from. Yeah, you, you move towards it and it never seems to get any louder. If anything, it seems to grow more and more distant and uh, until finally it, it fades altogether. And you're now deeper in the labyrinth. Mark, yes, Kat. Yeah, Mark, go ahead. where are you taking us? Where, where? Stop. It, 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 it's just uh, just around the next bend. Uh, Stop. Oh heck. We aren't getting any closer, are we? No. All right. Well, guess I'm going to attempt to uh, navigate again. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> How bad could it be? Ooh, 95 oh, out of 10 geez. out of 30. Yeah. It'd be real bad. <laughs> um, as you continue on deeper, what is everyone feeling? What is everyone thinking as you venture further and further into the darkness? We'll start with you, Cassie. Um, she's keeping herself on guard, on alert, but deep down she knows it's a, kind of a fool's errand. And there's definitely a, everything is colored by a sense of hopelessness for her. Um, she's just here because it's inevitable. 
and she part of her wants to take the map and, and to find out where they need to go but it's not strong enough to overcome how about you Geneva uh, um, she's on edge certainly um, but I also think that there is this feeling of like what the fuck else is there that we can do at this point so yeah I mean I think she's She's just on edge and trying to prepare herself for whatever horrific thing they will come across or some name that she's going to recognize the way that Mark seemingly did or something along those lines. What about you, Michael? Uh, He's pretty similar to Cassandra. Like, he's kind of like, this is inevitable. Uh, Whatever it is, it's almost like um, sort of like a a religious like sort of a thing where it's like you're in, you're completely putting yourself in some, in somebody else's hands and like a higher power's hands definitely doesn't think it's God. He thinks that's whatever it is that has arranged this. Uh, but yeah, he feels like he has no agency. And so it doesn't really matter. Like if someone points him in a direction, he will walk that direction until something comes to inevitably nudge him in the direction that he is intended to go. If that makes sense. It does. Yeah. How about you, Mark? What's what are you thinking? I, I think the overwhelming feeling for Mark is just frustration as uh, every every time he turns a corner, he he thinks, you know, there's going to be something and there just isn't. Uh, and he can't even follow the voices that are calling out to him. He is. Um, he's getting very frustrated with this, I, I think, at, at, at one point he just you know, um, holds out his notebook, which has kind of a, a copy of, of the map on it. And he, he, he just holds it out to anybody else in the party and says, I, I don't think I can do this. Hey, Cassie, roll alertness for me. 47 out of 59. You look to your left as you reach another juncture and another series of tunnels. And you see a pale face in the darkness ahead of you, down this left tunnel. Is it the one that I saw in the that void? Similar. I tug on Michael's uh, the, the, the sleeve of his robe. <laughs> you hear yeah, a voice. Yeah. You hear a voice. A whisper, but impossibly loud, almost as if it's right next to you. Come and see. How does Michael react when he sees it? Uh, well, he probably freezes, I think. Stock still. Can you see that? Yes. He's going to take a deep breath and walk towards it. Well, you are linked together, and Mark is in the lead. He's going to tug on the rope. Yeah, Mark, you feel the tug around your waist. Uh, what? Uh, Mark will look that direction, too. Do I see it? You do. No. Did it say, come and see? It did. Okay. Mark will... Uh, point his head so that his light is on it. Does that change its appearance at all? Can I see more of it? Vaguely, you become aware of a form. But you still just see the mask. Do you step closer? Mark pulls out his gun. Okay. Is it like like a mask? It d- Yep. Okay, so there's no, like, change in expression. No. Do you step closer? Yeah, actually, Cassandra's going to untie the rope around her waist as best as she can. And okay. And break away. Yes, she, no. She's going to walk past walk. Mark. Uh, we all tackle her. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as she walks past Mark, she's going to, with the lantern in one hand, she's going to lift it up, but also take a random bottle off of the shelf and just kind of 
hold it down by her hips or by her thighs, maybe even kind of like tapping it against them, you know, just in case she needs to hit something. As you step closer, are you, are the others, are the rest of you following her or are you kind of hanging back? No, Michael's walking towards it. Basically any nudge in a direction, he'll, he'll go there. Okay. As you step closer, your the light from your lantern illuminates the form of, of the sommelier. Once again, the velvet robe, the slippers. You see no tracks in the ceiling, but you see these strings running up from its body into it. And it holds out the hand to you, Cassandra. A very stiff kind of motion as a string is tugged and the hand comes up. She looks at the bottle in her hand. Uh, is there a name on there that is recognizable or is it just random? Random. Okay. A woman's name, but not yours. She will look at it and just put it on the ground, not even on the back of a shelf. Because I assume like all the bottles are pretty like neatly and tightly stacked. Where and whom? J.C. Lins. Come and see. She takes its hand, looks back at the others, and turns away and walks and follows the sommelier. Do Mark's right behind her. Okay. Oh, God, this is... Oh, man, okay. Uh, yeah. Shouldn't we be looking for our own bottles? But also, I'll follow, too. <laughs> but I think yeah, Michael is... Michael. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Geneva, like, reluctantly follows and probably keeping an eye out on the bottles for a name that she recognizes. She assumes she'll find one with her own at some point. We'll see. Okay. Uh, everybody go ahead and roll... Let's roll alertness. Alertness or search, whatever's higher, as, as you maneuver through the labyrinth. Okay. Uh, but I did, I did want to say, Michael will say at some point when they're like a, pretty much right when they start following the sommelier, uh, he's going to go, Cassandra, why'd you untie the rope? We're all coming with you. She didn't say anything. He nudges her. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, Mark, as you walk, you see a bottle for James Strickler. Does that name mean something to me? Not, not, not for you. That's for that's for Mark. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, is it open? It is not. Geneva, you see one for Tim Rollins. Also closed. Also closed. also closed. Michael, you see one for Evelyn Whitwer Grant. Ooh. Cassie, are you looking? Or are you? Oh, Cassie, are you looking? Or are you staying focused on the sommelier? Uh, I mean, she's looking, but she's still being led by the sommelier. Okay. I'll say you see one for Natasha Johns. She looks at it and does that kind of internal sigh, but turns her head back towards uh, the sommelier and just keeps walking. Uh, so the question for you, Michael, if it was open or closed, it is closed and stopped. He's going to take it off the shelf and tuck it into a pocket in his rope. Okay. Yeah, Mark right. is going to grab uh, Strickler's bottle as well. Okay. Do you all continue? Uh, are you like hanging back? Or are you are you trying to keep up with Cassie and, and the sommelier? Mark's right, right next to to Cassie. Okay. It, it, you find that as it, it is very easy to lose track of of Cassie and the sommelier. Uh, so you, you stop. You look at the bottle. You realize what it is. And when you look up, it, you, all you, you can barely see the glow from Cassie's lantern. It is so dark in here. Uh, but you're all are all able to keep pace. Uh, 
eventually the sommelier glides to a stop before this strangely lit alcove at the end of one particularly long hallway, one particularly long tunnel. It floats, it floats or glides to the side and you see a single bottle of these ever darkening layers of crystal. Mark, you know this bottle well, you've seen it in your dreams multiple times. It is stopped with a cork and sealed with a melted yellow wax in which is pressed that strangely angular symbol you have seen before. The name on the plaque of the bottle is J.C. Lins. J-A-C-Y Lins. The sommelier turns to the three of you, Mark, Michael, and Geneva. You don't see eyes behind the mask, but you nevertheless get the sensation that it is looking at you. Not yours. And it holds out a hand, a tug of the string, and the hand is extended. Now, I was already holding one of its hands. Is this a different hand, or did it, like... It released, it released your hand, okay. yes. This is it, right? I mean, this is what we came here for. The sommelier once again whispers, Not yours. The head cranes down to gaze at or toward the bottle you hold in your hand, Mark. Mark is going to take the bottle and throw it against the wall. It collides with the stone. Doesn't crack, doesn't break. Kind of bounces off and rolls to a stop. Cassandra's going to use that as distraction to try and get JC's bottle. You reach out and you see that it is mounted on some kind of mechanism. Do you pull at it? Yeah. You pull it forward, and there's this bronze clockwork wheel connected to its base, and it spins and clicks as the bottle itself is pulled forward. When it is at full extension, there is this loud cracking noise, and the bottle comes off the connection. The alcove opens inward, revealing this full-size passage and steps that lead up into mist and darkness. Cassandra looks back at the others, lifting the uh, lantern close to her face. Are you coming? Do you keep J.C. Lenz's bottle, Cassie? Yeah, it's in the other hand. Okay, add that to your inventory. Okie doke. All right, Mark Mark picks picks up Strickler's bottle and, and just puts it gently and carefully to the side or or on an alcove if there's one open strangely enough there is and two more and that marionette turns to regard you Geneva and then you Michael Geneva didn't grab Tim's ah okay thank you uh, I apologize uh, at least it looks at you Michael can I keep it not yours Fuck, fine. And he'll pull it out of his pocket and drop it on the ground. Go and see. Yeah, we're going. You wouldn't happen to have a bottle of wine on you, would you? Silence. Nah, I didn't think so. What do you all do? Cassandra's already walking up. Uh, I guess follow Cassandra. Mark? Yeah, yeah. Mark's right behind Cassandra. Oh, Mikey. Yeah, like he's going to stay here by himself. (laughs) He's not going to be like, have fun, guys. Hang out with the smelly Yeah, Yeah. exactly. He seems like a real cool guy. Great conversationalist. Well, first, everyone go ahead and roll 1d20. I really hope this is for sanity loss. <laughs> you just put me out. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, uh, Doug with 14, Cassie with 14. Nice. Uh, Michael with 13 and Geneva with nine. You regain that much sanity. 
Ooh! Oh, nice. Oh, dang. I should have rolled high. That puts me at 69. Hey! Nice. Nice. <laughs> I, I might not be able to go that high, actually, though. What's your unnatural score? Um, My unnatural score? Yeah, so that's the only thing that dictates uh, how much your maximum sanity can be. So if, if you if is it like zero or is it ten? Uh, unnatural is zero. You can go as high as ninety nine. Oh, wow. OK, so I can go above my original. You You certainly can. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm better than I ever have been. I'm better than I've been in a long time. <laughs> Good. You all climb up and up ever onward. And eventually you realize there is this kind of faded yellow light. And you hear the sounds of waves lapping against the shore. The sound of a breeze. You step up and you suddenly lose consciousness. Maybe only for a moment. But when you open your eyes again, you're on the rocky shore of this windswept lake. Not sure what happened in between those steps and now. You feel the sand beneath the skin, beneath the pads of your fingers, the backs of your hands, the palms. You sit up and you see you are on this lake shore. It is night. The sky is dark with a thin skein of clouds. Two moons and these strangely luminescent black stars hang in the sky. This feeling of intense dread and melancholy seems to hover over everything. You see these towering ruins of a city surrounding the lake. The buildings ancient and bizarre, but many have these indications of modern construction techniques and materials. Many more are marked by bullet holes and damage from explosions, all of them collapsed and from the looks of it uninhabited. The lake water itself is black, steel, clear and silent. Night and the mist itself make the far shore all but invisible. No lights are seen across the lake except for the moons and the black stars and the sky, but there do appear to be lights below the water. And this is essentially what the mural I saw is. It right? is. Yeah. Yep. What do you do? Cassie just steps a little bit ahead, looking out to the coast, and just whispers to herself, is this the city of the dead? Wait, what? You know this place? I've seen it before. I, not like this, though. I've seen images of it, uh, painted images. When I first met those figures, I met them in Skid Row, and they had taken over some alleyway and were painting this mural of, of this, this cityscape. Uh, when I saw it, I, I blacked out, and I, when I woke up, I, it was just still in my head. And afterwards, there was a, a colleague of mine who had also, uh, he had, hadn't reported for work in, in, a day, in days. And I was, two, uh, two agents reached out to me. They weren't with the FBI, not in the way that I, I was and that you were. I th they were with them, the agency. And they brought me to him. And when we got there, he was painting the mural as well. What? What? What does that mean, the city of the dead? I don't know. I, it just feels like 
There isn't life here. This. You feel it though, don't you? I mean, all of you, you, you can't not feel it. If you all would check your handouts, you may have some new information in there under part four, the end of the world of the end. I will say when they step out into this area, uh, Michael is going to reach out and take Geneva's hand. Yeah, she'll let you. <laughs> I love the phrasing of that. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> she'll allow it. Side note, uh, out of character, and this could be edited out, but um, I actually didn't know this was Carcosa. <laughs> I just said it because it thought I'd be colorful, but um, <laughs> what? Is, oh, what? The city of the dead? Yeah, I just said that it should be colorful. I, That's okay. No, we'll we'll leave that in. That's good. Okay. Uh, well, I, I'm just saying because I didn't know this was actually Carcosa, or yeah. it, 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 I assume it's Carcosa based on the the postcard. It, that that is what you know, uh, okay. intrinsically, Cassandra. And same for you, Geneva, Mark, Michael. Did you find yours? Yes. That is what you think so. Is it the thing uh, labeled corruption? Yes. Okay, cool. So are these letters that we suddenly find on our cell, our person, or? No, that's just the stylized handout. Um, Okay. Okay. That summarizes the knowledge that you now have. So we know So this just, does this like come to us as like a voice in our head or? Oh, so that would make sense then why she would set it. It was just like this, like, like, you, OK, I get it now. Like, it's just sort of came into her. Yeah, it's Got it's it. almost it's almost like, you know how you're watching TV, Mark, and all of a sudden you see a cityscape uh, flash on the screen and you you instinctively know what that city is. It's almost exactly like that. And when your mind makes that connection, it is to this knowledge that you now have. Does that make sense? Uh, I mean, kind of. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost yeah. it's it's almost instinctual. It's almost mm-hmm. just like, oh, I recognize that, even right. though you've never been here and never seen it before. I picture it almost as like you're watching a TV show that's been filmed in a city that you know, uh, and then a landmark pops up and you're like, oh, shit, that's Vancouver or whatever. Yeah, you know exactly, what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. But you never had this knowledge previously. I... I mean, I th- I think Mark is just going to look at the city and uh, begin reciting something almost as if by rote. Carcosa is ruled by the king in yellow. It's an alien country that absorbs other places and times into itself. Till is one of those places. Till or Holly maybe the palace or the lake you know I was just thinking that same thing really really yeah really the post well, it's not the weird thing that happened today <laughs> so this is Carcosa then city of the dead is that what you called it Cassie yes I that postcard we found, the one with the, the, the cityscape, but with the reflection uh, in the water. Do we still have it? You do. No, I was just asking one of them because I don't think I, uh, Cassie has it on. Oh, I know. Even even if... Uh, just thinking it, Cassie. You realize it's in your pocket. She reaches in and quickly like unfolds it and starts to look at it. Uh, bringing it to the others just to see if they see anything uh, and then looking back at uh, the the landscape to see if uh, we see we could, so we see where the reflections or not quite reflections we see like lights in the water or is it you completely do. black yeah well, what 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 which is strange right because the cityscape around the lake is dark but there are lights in the water so it's it can't be its reflection Dearest M made the crossing with a strange little man called Mosby. All is well. The towers of gold are magnificent. And yet, Yetel is a wonder. Say hello to V for me. Abigail is here. Wish you were. 
and that was the um, translation that Mark was actually able to get for you. Yeah. Because Doug's a genius. So <laughs> Mark's going to pull out the uh, the invitation that we got uh, from, uh, with, on the stationery of Hotel Broadwin. Ah, just from could, Abigail. Yeah, and kind of like go down the uh, the list. Find J.C. Lynn's at the Hotel Broadleben. Go now. Find the hotel, the labyrinth, the author, the off the, ho- the his bottle, the city, the lake, its shadow, the battle, and he just puts his his finger on the line that says the battle. He says, "I think we're here." Next is the party, the dance. Do I still have JC's body bottle in my hand? You do. Okay. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try and. You said that there's like a wax sealing the cork. Yes. I'm gonna turn to the others. Do we keep it sealed? I, I don't think you can open it. It's not your bottle. Yes, but that was there. Maybe maybe things are different here. Where are we supposed to present this as, as some kind of I don't know gift for this party? I think if you're meant to open it, you'll be able to, and if you're not, you can't. Cassandra considers it for a moment. She looks at the ground, thinking with the bottle in her hand, kind of twisting, uh, twisting it at the neck. Should I even try? Michael shrugs. Make a sanity roll for me, uh, Cassie. Sure. Now that I've got a big old 33. Never mind. (laughs) With an 81 out of 33. You have never been so sure of anything in your life than to not touch the top of that bottle. You... (laughs) want to will your hand out to grab it to touch it but your body doesn't respond this isn't yours to open and you know that Vince I think this is just reverse psychology (laughs) I know right (laughs) no um yeah Cassandra will put her fingers on the, the the seal and her hands will kind of tremble a bit as if trying to pick at it uh, and before just extending it to Geneva, take it. It's not ours. Yeah. But we should keep it. All right, Geneva will take it from her. All right, mark that in your inventory. Okay. What do you do? The way out is through. If we're supposed to be in the shadow, does that mean we swim? I mean, I don't know where else to go. Mark is is going to listen very carefully for the sounds of a party. You hear nothing but the sound of these waves mm-hmm. and the wind around you. <laughs> Off in the distance, you hear Tiesto. Yeah. <laughs> you just see like flashing <laughs> rave lights underneath the air. God damn it, Brett! <laughs> You're ruining the mood, motherfucker. I'm just uh, kidding. You, you hear that? No, what you really hear is the screaming Australian guy. The screaming <laughs> Australian guy. Um, Cassandra will step away from the party towards the, the edge, towards the edge uh, where the water meets the shore. Um, the ground looks like like asphalt or something, right? Or not asphalt, like uh, like gravel. Like it's it's rocky and unpleasant. You mean around the lake? Yeah. It's all sand. Oh, it's all sand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was bad. Um, okay. Yeah, she will... Uh, she'll take her, she, her she'll take her boots off uh, with her socks and just kind of, like, put her feet in the water. And as soon as, soon as you, you, you look down and you see the... It's almost like the far-off lights of a city with these avenues laid out like spokes in a wheel maybe 50 meters beneath the water. And as soon as you touch it, it causes, it, it causes the mist that's kind of settled like a layer over it to, to rise. 
and it spreads in this low haze. And within minutes, the water is replaced by this fog. And what is left is a lake composed only of mist. Even through the fog, some of the brighter lights below remain visible. I need uh, everybody to roll sanity. All right. So Cassie with a four out of 33, you lose nothing. Michael with a 72 out of 56, you lose one. Geneva with a 31 out of 43, you lose nothing. And Mark with a 72 out of 69, you also lose one. As you look around, uh, those of you paying attention, you suddenly become aware of these, all along the banks of this lake are these hundreds of long, ancient boats abandoned on the shore. Each one appears to have been cut from a broad 10 meter tree trunk and could easily fit 20 people. They're pushed up on the shore of rocks, un unsecured. Doesn't look like any has a sail, paddles, ropes, or a tiller. And each one is carved in a very unique style, a giant snake with scales and undulating curves, an, angle, uh, an eagle with wings folded in a dive. One is a sleeping dog. It's beautiful here. What do you do? Cassandra's well, going to take... Oh, go on. I, I was just going to say, the. Um, so now we're looking... The shore line still goes down, but we can just walk into the mist? Uh, potentially. Yeah, how does the mist feel against uh, Cassandra's feet? It, it feels like, uh, like, like a humid... Almost like steam, right? Like like the steam that comes out of a humidifier. Almost like that. Just just a very faint sensation of moisture. Okay. She'll walk in a little bit deeper to see if the floor uh, descends or gives way or anything like that. It does. And you hold a foot out and you feel like you're standing at the edge of a precipice. Like, you could easily fall if you're not careful. What's that? Is that the, called the, the Call of the Void? Where you look down at a re really big height, but you still want to jump just to see what happens? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. very much what's happening to Cassandra right now. Uh, Mark, Mark is going to grab the rope and go over to Cassandra and like hold it up and say we really should stay together will she let him uh, tie her back yeah she'll, well, she'll uh, take a moment of looking down at the, the mist water um, before she actually looks up and acknowledges you but then um, can you just can you hold that I just want to check something and she looks back down at the lake um well, oddly enough, when you awoke, that rope was gone. Oh. Oh, okay. well, that's not even a thing anymore. As were your helmets and lanterns and wallets and phones. Oh. And guns. Do I have my gun still? Oh, dang. How about my hammer? Actually, I'll, I'll wreck on that. I'll wreck on that. The, 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 the rope and the helmets and lanterns are gone but you still have your wallets. You still have your guns. I don't recall you keeping the hammer, but if you say you did, sure, you've got the hammer. Yeah, I said he tucked it in the, uh, the... Ah, yes. The rope belt of his new, of his new thing. That's right, yep. And Mark is still in a robe as well. Hell yeah, robe buddies. There you go. All right, well, I, I guess Mark doesn't, Mark... Mark just goes to Cassie, uh, seeing her looking longingly <laughs> at the lake, and she says, we should all go together. You're right. You're right, we should. Mark's just standing kind of uh, uh, right behind Ka uh, Cassandra's right shoulder, just a, a pace back. And as, as she takes a step forward, he takes a step forward with her. Just mirroring whatever she does. Are you are you stepping into the lake? 
I mean, she's already got a couple feet in the, in the lake, but she's not like stepping off that precipice that she she sensed. Okay. Um, but she will look back at the others, uh, who I assume are further back on the beach, uh, and then see the boats. Do you want to grab one of those? I mean, we could try. Sure. I, nothing for them to float on anymore. We don't know that. True. Mark, Mark will head over towards uh, one of the boats. These are huge, right? There's no way I could drag one of these into the water. Do you try? Uh, yeah, sure. He grabs a hold of the stern of one of the boats and begins pulling it towards the water. It It's like pulling paper. It's almost weightless. Ooh. Effortless. And you easily push it out onto the water. Or the mist, in this case. Oh, ye of little faith. Geneva, Michael, are you coming? Of course. Mark scrambles up over the side and uh, puts a hand down for Cassandra. She'll look at him, but then she'll look back at the others and almost like step aside uh, to let them go on first. Yeah, Geneva will, a little reluctantly, but continuing the theme of what other choice is there at this point. Michael will stop first because Cassandra stepped aside and turned to her and go, do you want to run or something? Are you trying to separate? No, I just, there is, there's got to be an end and I just want to get to it. Well, that's where we're going. If you want to run, run. No one's going to stop you. There's no point. But it might be nicer if we did this together. I have no intention of running at this point. Okay. I'll get up on the boat. And she will, uh, she will follow. As soon as you kind of step into the boat and seat yourself on these, these plain bench-like seats that have been carved into it, you are immediately filled with this sense, this feeling of having done the right thing, of correctness, that this is the way, this is where you need to be, where you've meant, where you have been meant, where you're meant to be. There we go. Um, and where you were meant to be all along. Everyone roll 1d4. All right, Geneva with a one, Mark with a two, Cassie with a two, and Michael with a two, that you gain that much sanity. I'm nervous you. that you're giving us this much sanity. I back. know. <laughs> Cassie, you feel in tune with the boat. Like this is your vessel. And just for... Uh, clarification, this is the sleeping dog one. Beautiful. I expected nothing less. It's like a basset hound. Um, yeah, she'll, uh, she'll stand at the end of the boat, uh, looking out. And it, it bears her weight fine, like a regular boat, right? It does, oddly enough. It, it kind of bobs on the mist as if it were water. Actually, uh, I'll change that. When Michael gets on, she, having still been off the boat, will get behind the boat and push it onto the water, or the mist. Effortless. Then, like, yep. run into it. Run into the boat. Yeah, you are on board. Is it just drifting, or do we have to, like, put our hands in a row, or what? It's just drifting for now. Um, what do you Is think? Is there a tiller? There's nothing. No tiller, okay. no sail, no paddles. What do you think, Cassie? What, what, where's your focus? Where are you looking? Where are you considering? Uh, my focus is below. I'm, rec I'm reciting the list in uh, my head of the, the things that we're supposed to see to get Abigail. So I'm thinking of that we're on the lake, uh, that we're looking at its shadow. Uh, we've got the bottle. And I'm focusing on the party. As soon as you begin to think down towards that city, 
the boat begins to drift downward. Not falling, but a controlled descent. Very slowly, very gradually falling into the mist. And you realize that this thing operates just by force of will. Go ahead and roll sanity. What if I will it to go home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you you notice if you look, you try to like think up, it no longer goes up. Okay. It only continues down. Okay. All right, with a success, yeah, you, uh, you lose nothing. This is the most sane she's ever felt. It makes sense, yeah. You continue to drift downward. And as you descend through the cloud lake, you notice these vast beasts swimming ponderously through the fog like whales through the ocean. They seem completely unconcerned with you or your presence, but their sheer size is terrifying. Each is at least 30 meters long. And I'll show you a photo, a picture. Yes. I kind of love this place. Oh, oh look at that. I think that's so cool. Nope. No, you're not into it? <laughs> nope. Look, any fish with a mouth that big that could eat me, not interested. No thanks. The ocean freaks me out. <laughs> oh, I love the ocean. I like, gigantic. Too. Gigantic marine life, I think it's so cool. I yeah, love I'm being just... on the water, but the thought of like what is below the surface and how little of it that we actually know about terrifies me. <laughs> See, that's what I love about it. It's this whole, like we're always looking to space, but that's the real alien life form down there. True. Right? It's very true. You notice that there are these, you know, in the wake of these giant whale-like creatures are swarms of something else. These airborne beasts the size of horses. And they appear to be feeding on the whale's droppings. Their wingspan is gargantuan. They spin, flap, and tumble through the cloud lake. Their biology seems to flow like wax. Random chitinous limbs and bat-like wings extrude as needed. Pinpoint yellow eyes cover their flesh-like scales so they can for all intents and purposes, see in all directions at once. Go ahead and roll sanity for me, please. All of us? Yup. Ah. Uh, all right. Oh, Cammy with a success. That's uh, that's the first one in a minute, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> for a while, yeah, for, for sanity rolls. All right, so Mark with a 94 out of 70. Uh, Cassie with a 36 out of 35. Michael with a 61 out of 57, and Geneva with a 19 out of 44. Uh, Geneva, you only lose one. For Cassie, Mark, and Michael, please roll 1d6. Ooh. Oh, that Ooh. was a big one. And there goes that sanity. <laughs> Mark, you lose six. Michael, you lose two. Cassie, you lose six. You will go temporarily insane unless you choose to project. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to project... Um, not very many people I have to project on still. Right. Yeah. Probably on my mother, Ellen Hansel. How about you, Cassie? I've still got a little bit left. I can I can I can push some of that onto Alonzo. Okay. Now so yeah, roll uh, 1d4. Two, two for Mark. Yep. So you'll lose that much willpower and that much from your bond. And same from you for you, Cassie. That much from willpower, that much from your bond. Your willpower points. Sorry, not your willpower score. Okay, well, I'm at three. Okay. Oh, jeez. That's what uh, you all get for not sleeping. Yeah. Well, you know what? <clears throat> that's what that means. Um, but, uh... Okay, so I, I, so I don't take any sand loss then, right? Or I take a, some. So, so you deduct that from your sand loss. So instead of six, it's now four. Okay. 
but also is, your will your willpower points and your bond drops by that much. Okay. Is four still temporary insanity? Nope. Anything or anything five or above. So you're just under. Oh, just under. Okay. So. I think uh, Michael is going to turn to Geneva. <laughs> I'm assuming they're just kind of like standing at the prow of the boat or looking out over it at some point. Is it weird that I kind of like it here? I think it's designed for you to like it here. I don't think yeah. it's weird, but just don't trust that feeling. I suppose. I mean, it just seems peaceful. Almost as soon as you say that, Michael, two, <laughs> two of those winged beasts peel off from the others and dive at the boat. <laughs> you just had to say it, didn't you? <laughs> Michael pulls the hammer from his from his waistband. And I think that's a good place to stop for the night. Ooh! Ooh. Thank you for listening to Delta Green, Impossible Landscapes, part of the Black Project Gaming Podcast. If you like what you heard, please consider leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, and be sure to visit blackprojectgaming.com for previous Delta Green episodes. You can also listen to our ongoing Waterdeep Dragon Heist and Barovia, California campaigns. If you'd like updates on all future releases, please follow us on Twitter or Facebook. Until next time, I'm Vince, your host and handler with Brett as DEA Special Agent Michael Whitwer, also known as Agent Vega, Cammie as FBI Special Agent Geneva Brown, also known as Agent Venus, Doug as FBI Special Agent Mark Hansom, also known as Agent Meshock, and Jack as FBI Special Agent Cassandra Troy, also known as Agent Madison. Thank you again, and remember, we'll be seeing you.